B-52 and two 95 strategic bombers entered service in the 1950s, but even today they remain an integral part of the nuclear forces of Russia and the United States. These planes were created as a means of transporting nuclear weapons, because at that time the level of technology did not allow the development of long-range and high-precision ballistic missiles. Since then, missiles have been central to nuclear strategy, but the flights of these planes near the borders of the two countries have continued to cause quite a stir in the media and despite their advanced age they will continue to do so for at least a decade and a half. The two bombers were developed for the same purpose, the transport of nuclear bombs into enemy territory. The first to be born was the B-52, whose design was taken from Nazi German engineers. The main planned requirement was the ability to reach anywhere in the USSR. In view of this threat, Joseph Stalin ordered that a similar aircraft be designed against the B-52. Obviously, the Soviet mission was the same, to be able to reach anywhere in enemy territory. And finally the 295 bomber was born. The two planes took off for the first time in 1952, but the first to enter service was the B-52 in 1955, a year before the Soviet Union's strategic bombers. Although they haven't changed much over the years, both American and Soviet bombers now have equipment that has nothing to do with the originals. For example, the 295 currently has the Novella and V1.021 active electronic scanning radar which allows you to see targets flying at a distance of 90 km and 320 km in the case of maritime targets. In addition, the bomber is capable of simultaneously following up to 50 targets. The aircraft also had what was referred to as a so-called glass cabin installed. The B-52 has also undergone a number of modernizations, and is now equipped with the AN-AAQ-6 Optical Electronic Observation System, GPS Navigation and an SPN-GEANS Inertial Navigation System based on a laser gyro. In dimensions, the B-52 is bigger so that it can carry a greater combat load of 31.5 tons compared to the 295 which is 21 tons. However, the permissible dispersion radius when launching an unguided bomb is about 80 meters for the B-52, whereas in the case of the Soviet aircraft it is only 5 meters. The same advantage is observed in the case of missiles operated by two aircraft. The 295 can launch the KH-101Y KH-102 missile which has a range of 5,500 kilometers and an accuracy of 10 meters. Meanwhile, the AGM-86B of the B-52 can only reach a distance of 2,400 km and has an accuracy deviation of 80 meters. As for nuclear weapons, the KH-102 missile can carry a warhead with up to 250 kilotons, while the maximum strength of the warhead carried by the B-52 is 150 kilotons. In terms of performance, the American bombers beat the Soviets, especially at high altitude. When aircraft were developed there were still very few aircraft that could fly more than 10 or 12 kilometers, which is why the B-52's designers considered that the best defense was to fly at an altitude of about 15 kilometers, putting them out of reach of their potential adversary. In fact, the B-52's nickname, Stratofortress, can be translated as Stratosphere Power. In this aspect, the 295 was inferior, as it only flew 12 kilometers above the surface. The American aircraft also had an advantage in speed, though not that large. Despite being powered by eight turbojet engines, the B-52 only reached a speed of 1,047 kilometers per hour, while its cruising speed was 844 kilometers per hour. The 295, on the other hand, is equipped with four turboprop engines and is the fastest aircraft in the world with this type of propulsion. This engine with coaxial propellers accelerates it to a top speed of 830 km per hour and a cruising flight of about 700 km per hour. 
with some modifications the aircraft can fly as fast as 910 km per hour, which is an impressive number for a propeller-driven airplane. The two strategic bombers are very similar but at the same time very different. Each of them are certain advantages and disadvantages, but none of them have absolute advantages. The strangest thing is that these two planes have been operating in their respective countries for more than half a century, and they are expected to remain flying into the 2040s. This means that they will likely fly for 100 years or a century which will make them the longest military aircraft in history.